So after the customer has just watched the presentation you gave them and the workers in action, it's time to roll up your sleeves and close the customer. Yep, that's right. And a lot of times this can be uncomfortable, but you've got to be willing to push past that uncomfortability. You need to be a leader that helps this person makes a decision. It's your duty to close them because if you don't, you're leaving them an 80% chance of failure. You have to look at it as your absolute duty. It's your responsibility to close them. And sometimes that can involve pressure, but when you're doing it from an ethical place, pressure's good. And you know what? There's some customers who wait a long time to make a decision. I once had a customer who didn't do a project for a year because they had trouble making decisions. But I came in there as an authority, showed them exactly what they needed. And at the closing table, I was there for 10 minutes trying to convince this customer to close. When I finally did, we did the project and he was so happy that I did that. As they say, pressure makes diamonds and sometimes pressure is needed to create great things. So let's talk about the pre-close. It's a four-step process. The first step is we're getting two little yeses. We're saying, Mr. Jones, are you confident in our company? Mr. Jones, have I answered all your questions, right? Those are two little yeses at step one and two. And then the third question is, Mr. Jones, other than the price, would there be any reason we couldn't get your job started today? And you're gonna say it with this intensity. And when you get them and you ask these questions, you're limiting the objection just down to the price. And when you've got one or two objections, right? Maybe they say it's not the price. You know what? I still have to get other estimates. You have at least know what you've got to target, the objection that you have to shoot at. The If it's price, you're shooting at that price objection. If it's other estimates, you're shooting at that. But at least you know what you're working with so you're not blind firing, right? And that's what we're doing here. And then after you ask him that, he may say something like, yeah, I have to get other estimates. Or he may say, no, nah, it just comes down to the price. Whatever his answer is, you're then going to give him a commitment statement. And that commitment statement is going to say, well, Mr. Jones, I want to let you know that I'm going to do everything within my power to not let price get in the way. What this does is this leaves you room to negotiate. If he says, nah, it just comes down to the price and you give that commitment statement. If you got to come down a couple hundred bucks, you've got an excuse to. You can remind him about the commitment statement. Let's say you go to close and you show the price and you see, he says, oh, the price is too high, right? And you say, Mr. Jones, do you remember when I promised you I'd do everything in my power not to let price get in the way? What if we did this, right? Blah, 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 blah. And it gives you room to negotiate without looking fake. Now, I do have one more thing to mention, and this is called uh, a comfortability statement. So if the customer does say, I have to get other estimates, Right? You give him the commitment statement. Well, Mr. Jones, I want to let you know I'm going to do everything with my power not to get let price get in the way. And then you add some more ketchup and mustard to it. And you say, and Mr. Jones, you know, if I'm reading you right, which I think I am, you just want to be comfortable with any decision you make. Am I right? And he's going to say, yeah, because everybody wants to be comfortable. And you say, listen, I just want to let you know I'm not going to let price or comfortability or any of that get in the way of getting you the flooring you deserve. Sound fair? And then that's going to lead you into your clothes.